In the previous video, we looked at some of the mechanisms that are required for the Welsh Allen to send data into a database. And this involved an intermediate program called Mirth Connect, which is able to interpret HL7 messages and convert them into something that a database can understand. The messages themselves are encoded, but we can also look at this, at this from the networking point of view in terms of how the data is sent through the network. For now we're gonna be using a program called Wireshark, which you may have heard of before. Uh, this is a program that lets you do packet captures on a network, so you're able to see packets as they go across a link. One of the nice things about Wireshark is it's able to break down the packet information. So you can see here, these are all the individual data components of a given packet. As I change the packets here, you can see the information contained in those packets will also change. So for networking, this program is a very, very valuable tool in that it lets you really zero in on information that goes through a network. But usually packet captures get pretty large pretty quickly. In fact, you can see this is a pretty large file. Uh, it contains almost over 160,000 individual packets in this one file. So we could spend the whole day going through this file looking for the packets we care about, but we know that we're only looking for HL7 packets. So using the filter tab at the top, we can type in HL7 and press enter and Wireshark will start going through and pulling out all the HL7 packets. So these packets here are packets that have been sent by the Welsh Allen to Mirth Connect to be interpreted. Now these are the raw packets that have not been interpreted. And down here you can actually see they're in Wireshark there's a built-in module just for HL7 and it will make it, it will start pulling out the individual pieces of information of HL7. One sort of important thing to note right now is you're able to read all the all this information no problem. So that tells us right away that this information has not been encrypted. So you could put a tap on a network and then watch these packets go through that contain all of this patient information potentially. Now if you right click on this packet, any one of them, and go down to follow and then follow the TCP stream what that will do is it will start pulling the information, it will start pulling the context of this packet. So you can see here it comes with a list of HL7 messages, which actually match the HL7 messages that we saw in Mirth Connect. And we can switch it over to like the hex view, for example, and see the raw hexadecimal values, or even go into uh, like raw mode and see just pure hexadecimal uh, packet information, but it's more useful in the ASCII mode where we can actually see the HL7 messages themselves. And again, this is similar to Mirth Connect in the sense that we can go to channels and then view messages. And down in here, we can look at the uninterpreted message, which it looks exactly the same as what Wireshark is reporting. So if we go and do the follow TCP stream, not only will we be able to see the raw HL7 message in its uninterpreted form, but if we click close down at the bottom here, we can see that Wireshark has actually pulled the context of that information. So this is the entire conversation taking place between the Welsh Allen and the server, from the TCP handshake all the way down to the final uh, TCP acknowledgement packet. In this case, the Welsh Allen sent the same information multiple times. Um, but this is a useful feature of Wireshark in terms of it showing you how what, what the process is in sending the packets. So if there's some kind of issue from a networking standpoint, you could load it up in Wireshark and look at the individual information in these fields here and try and diagnose where a certain problem may be occurring. It also gives you insight to some other kinds of information, like you can see here, we have the source and destination of this packet, the source being the Welsh Allen and the destination most likely being a switch in the network. But you can also see the source and destination IP addresses for this packet.